Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well today, this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, depending on when you are watching this video. Welcome to, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to this video, which is a look at Chelsea's perhaps most brightest star at the moment, the shining light, the small bastion of hope throughout this Chelsea squad, which looks flawed in many ways across the starting 11, and that is Chelsea's midfield maestro, 25-year-old Croatian midfielder, Mateo Kovacic. Kovacic is an incredibly skillful, talented, cultured midfielder, obviously of Galactico quality, came from Real Madrid, played loads of uh, top tier games, has won the Champions League, was frustrated that he wasn't getting enough game time over Luka Modric, which was kind of understandable at the time at his age. Um, he was probably 22, 23. Um, you know, he had a great career leading up to that. He's played great at Inter. He was very, very good for Real Madrid. But Chelsea managed to sign him. They took him on loan, obviously, with the whole Thibaut Courtois situation. I think they started bartering with Real Madrid. And then obviously when they knew they were going to sell Eden Hazard to Real Madrid, they managed to negotiate a deal for the permanent signing of Mateo Kovacic for just £40 million. And looking at the kind of performances he has been delivering for Chelsea Football Club of late and how he's developed and just how he's barely entering his prime, that looks like this could be one of Chelsea's greatest ever transfers. And I'm going to talk about his numbers and his performances in today's video. Before I get into the gear and starting to wax lyrical about Kovacic, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet already done so. Please do subscribe, hit that bell notifications icon because that is important on YouTube. But why not like this video, follow me on Instagram, all that kind of gear. All right. Let's get into it. So Kovacic, last season he did look very good under Maurizio Sarri. I remember his debut game, he was playing with Eden Hazard, he looked very very similar, they have similar builds, he was wearing the number 17 on his back, Hazard's last number, uh, and they're quite dribbly players so they always look very similar in many ways. You look at one and you think it was the other on the pitch, which speaks loads of positive volumes about Kovacic. I think he struggled a little bit under Sarri because Sarri had a very dogmatic, idealistic way of playing football where he does put restrictions onto certain players. You know, you can think of think what you will about that if you think it's right or wrong. But the point being, there's very systemic and robotic where Kovacic is quite, I don't want to say mercurial because he's he can be disciplined, but I think he's quite an expressive player. And it seems that we're starting to see the best of him under Frank Lampard. And maybe you could have predicted that because Frank Lampard himself was a great midfielder and he wants uh, the best out of Mateo Kovacic. Probably can teach him a lot, but they are very different players in many ways. So Chelsea obviously got humbled by Bayern Munich in the Champions League, but if you look at the player ratings, Mateo Kovacic was the only player to actually shine for Chelsea. I'm going to pop the uh, match centre up on the screen real, real quick now. As you can see, it's 7.9. It was actually 7.95, basically 8, which was by far and away Chelsea's best performer on the pitch on the night. So it shows you he's already got the mentality at his age of playing big games. He's not phased Mateo Kovacic. He actually spoke very, very well in his pre-match presser. He's not phased by big games. He's played Champions League finals, etc. He's got the mentality to deal with epically dangerous opposition and he believes in himself. And in a season where Chelsea's only potentially world-class player and uh, I was going to say Eden Hazard, he's gone, and Golo Kante, you know, just being constantly injured, struggling to find form, having a very difficult season, you've got a consistent performer like Mateo Kovacic, who has easily been Chelsea's player of the season this season, he's the shining light. He's also four years younger than N'Golo Kante, and he's very different, sure he's not as good as an interceptor as Kante, but in terms of dribbling, carrying the ball, progressing the ball up the pitch, and picking out passes, he is superb. Now, one of the biggest differences between uh, last season and this season regarding Mateo Kovacic is how now he's picking out passes, hitting them first time. Sure, last season we saw him dribbling through the between the lines, you know, carrying the ball from midfield, being very technical and quick passing as well as dribbling. But this season we're seeing him actually sort of dictate plays and play a little bit more of a quarterback role, taking that role of Jorginho sometimes, but also just doing it himself, either switching the play out wide or playing forward balls, whether that be over the top or along the deck, he seems to be doing it all at the moment. Obviously, <laughs> Kovacic didn't score a goal for a very, very long time. But since he scored two goals, and they were in quick succession, and they were both two, <laughs> two very good goals, long-range drives to score 
unsavable goals essentially so he's shown that he's got that in his locker it will be nice for him to advance into the box and score a few tap-ins but it just goes to show he can strike a ball well when he gets a few more goals he'll probably be the most complete mid Fielder in Europe? I don't know. So defensively, Mateo Kovacic is a very capable midfielder. He's not just a cultured, ball-progressing, forward-thinking midfielder. He makes 2.5 tackles and interceptions per game, which is very, very passable indeed. Obviously, he's got two goals this season, one in the Premier League, one in the Champions League, and in the Premier League, he's got three assists, which is passable considering his type of role in the team. He also makes a key pass per game as well. Now, considering he's not really a playmaker, he's more of an all-rounder, one key pass per game is very very, very good indeed and as Chelsea get better and better finishing those key pass stats should go up but rather monstrously Mateo Kovacic makes 2.7 dribbles per game and he makes 4.1 dribbles per game in the Champions League obviously they mostly came in the uh, group stages even though he probably did uh, a couple against Bayern Munich 4.1 and 2.7 is absolutely monstrous averaging out a 2.9 dribbles per game <laughs> this season now those kind of numbers are like super tricky winger numbers like you know Hazard kind of average three dribbles per game on the wing one of the best dribblers in the game and to do that from central midfield from playing out of the press that is just superb it's really really impressive he's actually one of the most press resistant central midfielders uh, probably in world football he can turn very very well with the ball uh, much better than Jorginho and indeed Kante than that um, he can you know escape up to four people applying pressure to him and press him and just progress the ball up the pitch really unique in that sense Mateo Kovacic sure he can put in some defensive work make some tackles clearances make some interceptions and win the ball back but you know in terms of actually playing forward and dribbling and carrying the ball he's got like elite winger dribbling qualities but he just brings it into the central midfield and that's what kind of makes Mateo Kovacic really really special so yeah he's got a couple of goals he's got three assists he's good defensively he's really good at uh, playing out of the press combining he's the most press resistant player I can think of at the moment in a central midfield because if you think about all elite opposition or other big teams they put themselves in a position where they don't need a player like Mateo Kovacic where they just combine so well through the, the you know the sectors of the pitch they just get up and down but Chelsea because they're such an unsettled team with let's be honest poor players all over the pitch they rely on someone like Mateo Kovacic to just say look I'm going to hold the ball for more than a second here and I'm going to drag it towards the opposition goal without the help of my teammates. In many ways, like Eden Hazard did, but Hazard obviously came deep, carried it up, and then scored or assisted or something. Mateo Kovacic is more of a sort of functioning player in the midfield that can do all that. But although he's probably, well, he has been Chelsea's best player, he'll get better and better when there's better players around him. So it's difficult. Chelsea have got a flush midfield. I think as more perhaps youngsters come in, as when Ziyech starts playing the 10 and combining it with him, if Billy Gilmore gets some minutes to play next to him, I think that'll be really, really interesting. And of course, the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek returning. I think Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Mateo Kovacic can combine very well indeed in the central midfield playing for Chelsea because you know Ruben is a good ball carrier as well and he's very good at doing one twos and driving the whole team forwards I think he could do that with Mateo Kovacic Kovacic has been learning those late runs into the box from Frank Lampard you see him scramble in sometimes but not quite come off if Ruben's playing him in they can practice more he can get more chances and hopefully he can score more goals for Chelsea Football Club so there it is I've talked about why he's Chelsea's best player this season good defensively okay offensively superb in terms of controlling the game progressing the ball up midfield playing through the press dribbling at 25 years old Mateo Kovacic looks like an absolute baller remember Chelsea got him what at 22 no he was 23 years old he must have been Sign him at 24, save for 40 million pounds it looks like an absolute snip and if Chelsea are to rebuild a new team in the summer with him in the central midfield, they could build something special, but patience is key here, and getting the right players for the right money is also key. But anyway, what do you guys think? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions of Mateo Kovacic. Is he your player of the season for Chelsea Football Club this season? Who do you think it would be 
interesting to see him partnered with moving forwards after the summer. Get down in the comment section below, express your thoughts and opinions on Mateo Kovacic and what you think of him this season. If you have enjoyed this content today guys, I'd urge you to like the video please because that means a lot, it helps me out and why not subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new. If you come to Football Therapy and watch the videos and you've not subscribed, hey, why not just subscribe man, do it, it helps me out, hit the bell notifications icon so you can keep updated so I upload every single day about Chelsea and sometimes I upload twice so why would you want to miss out on all that good gear. Make sure you follow me also on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm trying to get people to follow me on Instagram because I do live streams on there and I like talking to you lot about football and Chelsea Football Club so I'm trying to get more followers why don't you check me out on Instagram it's at Football Yannick I'll do some live streams most days. I'll talk to you there about Chelsea and football and we can just chat footy. Right, other than that, I'm done. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be